Hi, I'm Dr. Steve Vargo, and this is episode 29 of Can I Ask You One Question, where we dive into the minds of industry experts and thought leaders, and we try to learn one critical thing from them that we can apply to our professional lives and sometimes even our personal lives. And I have with me here Dr. Rob Klepfer from Mountain View Optometry in Calgary, Canada. And Rob is also, you may have seen him, in Canada. He's a, a frequent lecturer and a soon-to-be MBA graduate. How, how much longer do you have to go before the MBA? <laughs> I'm sure that's oh, keeping man. you busy with... That that feels good, doesn't it? It's uh, we're, we're getting there. I have one semester left, so January to April of 2023, and uh, that's it. That's all. I'm, I'm ready to, to sail off into the sunset from there. Awesome. Awesome. Um, yeah, this is great for you for, for, for doing that, pursuing the business side of the, the profession. Rob, you and I have followed each other on social media uh, for a while, and you posted something a while back that caught my attention, and it had to do with storytelling, which I believe to be one of the most effective ways to communicate uh, and inspire change in others. And if, if we want to be effective as doctors, uh, we really have to be instrumental in, in improving patient outcomes. And um, to do that, we need to get patients to embrace change. And a bit of a shameless plug is I, I felt so strongly about that. I actually wrote a book called Prescribing Change. And in one of the presentations I do, I talk about using patient success stories as a communication vehicle. But in your case, you're not sharing stories of other patients in this case. You're actually sharing your own story, which I thought was really interesting because I'm sure there's a lot of us, a lot of people listening to this that might have their own story to potentially share with patients that could inspire some kind of change or outcome in, in the patient. So I, I appreciate you coming on to talk about that. Um, so my story to you, or my question to you rather, is how has sharing your story impacted patient care? Well, Steve, thanks. You're, you're totally correct in the sense of it's not a topic. Being vulnerable as healthcare patients is not a topic that we necessarily dive into all the time, right? It's when I started my career almost 10 years ago, if I step back for a moment, I just, for some reason, I had this perception of a healthcare provider. I had to wear a, a, a shirt and tie to work every day. I had to kind of sit up taller and know every single answer. And you know what? In all honesty, it wasn't until probably five years ago where I had a student intern in with me and, and it was towards the end of the internship for that student. And we got into the back room and it was just after seeing a patient and they said, you know what, I, when I sat in that room, I could tell that patient was suffering from depression, just like I do. That was amazing, right? That all of a sudden that this student was being vulnerable with me. And for the first five years of my career, I was, I was, I was holding that, all that in. I had patients in front of me that had the condition that I have. And for some reason, I just wasn't willing to open up. Uh, and so that alone, and this student um, does probably not realize how much of an impact they had on me that day, but I left there thinking a little bit different of, okay, so even as a healthcare provider, maybe I should be a little bit more, more vulnerable. And so moving forward, you know, I, I've been able to share that story with patients of having rheumatoid arthritis in my knees since age seven. And sure, it's been frustrating, like everything along the way, but there's a lot of good things I've learned from not only sharing that story with patients, but even just being more vulnerable for myself to learn as well. So it's it's been impactful all the way around if I've just allowed myself to open up a little bit more. I like to draw this distinction between patient education and being a good communicator. And I think it's something that we really put a lot of emphasis ever since school on, on patient education which is essentially just sharing information with people, but information can be quickly forgotten. One, and you used, the, I think the, the right word that I was trying to think of before was vulnerable. There's a couple of things about, about sharing um, stories with others as maybe in addition to information is that it's it's much more sticky. People are going to remember that story. I, I, I cite sometimes the Stanford study that shows that stories are 22 times more, rem more memorable than information alone. We spend a lot of time educating and patients forget most of what we tell them. Stories are very sticky, but not only that, but it really connects with the emotional side of people's um, brain, which is where most of our decisions come from. So I, I think having that moment of vulnerability where you're having a conversation with the patient and they realize they're not going through this alone and you make that connection 
much more likely, I, I think, to have success in getting that patient, hopefully to do what a lot of times we're trying to do with patients is get them to do or change something that benefits their vision, their health, or their quality of life. So I, I just, I commend you for being vulnerable in that, um, in that way, because I think it probably, it, it benefits the patient, but it probably benefits you too. Because I think once you have that conversation with somebody, I, I just think in general, we open up a little bit, we realize we're not the only ones going through what we think we may be the only ones going through. Oh, it's, it's so true. You know what? There's that communication, communication side is, is so key for me. And again, for early on in that career, it just, it does take time to evolve, not only understanding yourself of how you communicate, but then going through it enough and, and answering those questions for patients, but being open all of a sudden, when you sit back from the computer, instead of just typing your notes and seeing, being so involved in just the, 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 the eyes in front of you, you get to sit back from that computer and just chat. And, and what you really realize too is that informal conversation beyond just the eyes really leads to, like you said, not only a, a, a relationship, a better relationship, but all of a sudden you start maybe realizing that there's other key things that you start realizing about that patient that are actually also more important uh, that can help with the care of that patient, whether it's just something that comes out from a medical side, or in fact, just how to approach that conversation with a patient because you learn more and, oh, I've learned, I've learned tons. It's, it's pretty neat. When you open up yourself, the amount that you get back, uh, from even just new treatments out there, different medications, it's rewarding on both sides. There's no question about that. I'll share something real quick too as we close out here, but you mentioned before the student that mentioned depression, which is a lot of people don't realize this, but um, I, I know these these numbers are fresh in my mind because I just did a presentation on it, but 50% of US physicians claim to be burned out in their profession and depression, if 40% of US physicians claim to have various levels of depression. Um, so a lot of people will fall into that category, but one of the main ways to to overcome that or to deal with that a lot of times i think our mind goes toward we need to exercise more see patients less take more vacations and those things do help but interesting the research actually points toward uh, changing how we practice from more transactional which i think a lot of us have gotten into in the current um healthcare model to more of a relational a relationship driven uh, mode of practicing that when you can do that, which is a lot of, you know, on par with what we're talking about is just, again, opening up, having those relationships with other patients and making it more relational for physicians that actually lowered their depression levels and burnout rates significantly. So yeah, if you're listening to this and, and you'd have a, you have your own story to tell, um, you know, if you feel comfortable with it, uh, I think it could benefit you and the patient to to open up and be willing to share that. So, Rob, thanks again. I appreciate you sharing this initially on social media, which is where I saw it, but also coming on here and and talking about it as well. Really appreciate it. Hey, thanks, Steve. Yes, it's uh, it's one of those things. You, you look at social media, maybe a little bit different than what uh, social media is is perhaps intended for. But uh, hey, there's real people behind those accounts of any kind, isn't there? And and like we said, if it's a way to open up a conversation about anything. It's fantastic. Honestly, I so much appreciate you having me on here. I love what you do. Um, keep doing what you do. And and uh, I'm looking forward to, to catching one of your lectures in person finally, uh, now that we're outside of this uh, COVID time. So thank you again for having me. Likewise, Rob. Thanks a lot. Um, and thanks everyone for listening. You can find the, the show notes for this and all other episodes at drstevevargo.com. So thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, Steve.